We want to welcome you all here tonight for the wrap-up of our community um, civic engagement meeting series called the OB Life. At tonight's meeting, unlike our previous meeting, we've invited our commission to attend and stay and hear the results of this wonderful body of work that you all uh, partake of. This is what it results in. Um, that's all of the meetings, all of the notes, all of this is online. The city residents, community leaders, business community, and members of the public participated in a series of six workshops, from community development to transportation, environmental and water quality, public safety, emergency preparedness, leisure services, and economic development. We held these meetings over a seven-month period, and we focused on how we can continue in Ormond Beach to be a special place to live, work, and play. And all of you were a part of that. This uh, initiative um, provided great feedback, and Raphael will talk about all the numbers. But this information has been and will continue to be shared with the City Commission, and they will use it in their strategic planning update. The first of those strategic planning meetings will be on September, I mean, February 27th. At tonight's meeting, staff will also share with you all the tools um, to increase transparency, to increase our transparency and um, our uh, way that we're going to continue to engage you called the um, uh, Open Gov Forum. But one thing I want to leave you with before I introduce you to the mayor is uh, Margaret Mead. She was a uh, social anthropologist. She said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, um, engaged, concerned individuals can change the world because, in fact, that's the only thing that ever has. So your participation tonight and throughout the series has helped change and shape the city of Ormond Beach and will continue to do so as the mayor and the city commission undertake the um, update of the city's strategic plan. And so it's my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce Mayor Bill Partington. I'll just grab the red one and hope that it's turned on. Thank you guys all for, for coming out tonight. I want to welcome you on behalf of the commission and the entire city, and thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I need to introduce our commissioners uh, from Zone 1, Commissioner Dwight Selby. From Zone 3, Commissioner Susan Persis. Zone 4, Commissioner Rob Littleton. This is the voice of the people. This book represents the compilation of about nine months of work. And we thank you for participating, for coming out and being involved. And we just ask that you continue to be involved because they're going to explain future opportunities to stay engaged. And it's kind of a historic uh, event, the OB Life. Never before has a commission, and I have to thank the commission for allowing this to happen, never before have they, at this level, sought out citizen engagement, which is so important to the success of our community. And so for the next few years, before the next one of these happens, I think staff and certainly the commission is going to refer to this and make sure that everything we do comports with what our residents told us. And so thank you. We appreciate you being here. And uh, please continue to stay engaged. It'll only make Ormond Beach better. Thank you, Mayor Joyce. Um, my name is Rafael Montalvo. Uh, my colleague, Hal Beardall, and I have been the facilitators for the previous six meetings. We've been doing that under the auspices of the Institute of Government at UCF and in a statewide organization called the Consensus Center. And both of those organizations, in this case, um, have a mission simply to help communities 
have conversations about public policy issues, and that's been our role here, to try and structure a constructive process that allows everybody to, to be involved um, on an equal footing, make sure all input has been preserved and forwarded for the record and for the use of uh, commission and staff in uh, the processes we'll talk about in a moment, um, and not here as subject matter experts. Um, Tonight, the, the agenda is a little bit different than what, uh, what you may have seen at earlier meetings. As the mayor alluded to, uh, the, the focus tonight is really on two things. One, um, giving you a flavor of the input from all six previous meetings. And when I say a flavor, I mean just a flavor. You have uh, upwards of 500 pages of input here um, in the form of the detailed meeting summaries of each of the prior meetings. Those summaries are, um, are online. We will boil all that down to about seven pages of um, a very uh, high-level summary this evening. But we hope that it'll be an opportunity to, um, for you to have a sense, perhaps, of what came out of the meetings that you didn't attend. How many of you attended at least one meeting? OK. How many of you attended all of the meetings? OK. So uh, some of this will look familiar to most of you. Uh, if you attended even one meeting, you'll see some of your input reflected here. Uh, but hopefully some of it will be a little bit new to most of you since you didn't attend all of the meetings. And again, it's just an opportunity to, to, to get a sense of what was there. We urge you to curl up with the 500-page tome or the parts thereof that are of most interest to you. Um, the second part of the meeting really looks forward. This has been an extraordinary opportunity to provide the city with input, but that's not a need that ends when uh, a strategic plan is updated or a particular decision is made. That's an ongoing need. And clearly, the turnout at these meetings has suggested that it's one, uh, it, it's an opportunity that, that many, many Ormond Beach residents welcome. So the focus for the second part of the meeting would be, will be on how to continue involved going going forward, uh, how to keep track of the strategic plan update process that the commission will be um, engaging in. More importantly, how to use a couple of online tools that the city has uh, committed to using to allow citizens to track what the city is doing and to provide input uh, on specific topics as the city does its day-to-day -day work and takes the decisions it needs to take going forward. So the second part of the meeting is a little bit of a tutorial on how to use those, um, those tools. Um, at the end of the meeting, we will... Uh, have you do something in real time to develop uh, some word clouds that will be additional input? I don't know. How many of you are familiar with word clouds? We'll explain them in a minute <laughs> then. Um, but the last part, the very last activity in the meeting is a little bit of uh, real time engagement with your neighbors to sort of think ahead uh, about what the city should be like and what you liked about this process. So, Joyce or Hal, anything else? Uh, no? Okay. So uh, you should all have in front of you an agenda uh, that pretty much covers the objectives and the review of the agenda. What I'd like to do now is give you the sense of the... Um, oh, here we are. I'm sorry. Uh, the sense of the meetings that I, I talked about a moment ago. So the, by the numbers, there were six meetings, 17 speakers, um, upwards of 667 attendees, those are the ones who signed in, uh, 602 questions answered. One of the uh, features of those meetings was that you could submit questions in writing that might not be answered, we might not have time to answer during the meeting, or the information handy to answer. Those were answered online by staff after the meetings. Those are posted as well. Um, and 10 table discussions around a variety of different topics related to the meeting uh, focus. There we go. We asked for evaluations at the end of each meeting to get a sense of how well the meetings were meeting your, uh, your expectations for your engagement here. Um, I want to go to the third bullet first. Um, we got a total of uh, 49 of evaluations back from 49% of the participants in these meetings. 
I can tell you as someone who does a lot of these meetings, that's an extraordinary uh, response rate on meeting evaluations. Um, they ranged from a low of 44% at the first meeting, which was attended by 260 people, so that's still a large number of, uh, of responses to upwards of 70% at some of the later meetings. So um, that at least tells us you were engaged at that point, because that comes at the end of the meeting. Uh, we were very grateful to get those back. We asked you to rate a number of things on scales of one to five, uh, with five being the best response. Um, we wanted to signal, uh, to highlight two. One, we asked you how useful the presentations were on a scale of one to five. The average for all the presentations was 4.37. Again, a very high number for something like this. And overall satisfaction with the meeting. And again, the average for all six meetings was 4.3 on a five-point scale. Again, with five being the highest. So uh, very high scores. Uh, we were happy to see those as well. All of this information from the meetings is available online. You can watch the, the meeting videos. Uh, they were videoed in their entirety, and those are online. You can uh, review the PowerPoint presentations, see the meeting materials, including the summaries, um, polling questions, and the online, the questions that were answered online after um, each of the meetings. The polling questions refers to specific questions we put to participants in the course of those meetings. Um, and for those of you who were here, participants responded using a, a polling device uh, with a scale of one to nine on those. So uh, all of that, again, is available online. You'll see a little bit more about how to access it later this meeting. For the summary of themes, the first meeting was the um, kickoff meeting, and uh, the focus of that meeting was in part on community development. So the first question we asked at that meeting, the first discussion question, we asked a number of polling questions, was um, what is it that you value most about living in Ormond Beach? And again, we had 260 people there. Um, this is the word cloud that reflects that input. Um, there's a summary at the bottom. What, I'll explain the word cloud in a moment, but what clearly came out of that meeting is that residents value the character of Ormond Beach, the small town feel, friendliness and sense of community, and closeness, closeness to nature. Some folks were talking about closeness, closeness to nature literally, to parks and preserves and the ocean and the river. Um, others were talking really about just the greenness of the community, the trees, the landscaping, the fact that it still looks like it's close to nature. What a word cloud does is take a list of words, and those that are repeated more frequently in the list appear larger and in bolder font. Um, each of these word clouds takes the words that were in the top 200 or so for frequency in input at that meeting, the, the written input in response to the question, and displays it as you see here. So you can literally see that you know the, the, the small town character of Ormond Beach, the feel of it, the ocean, nature, tree, and river on the left, uh, parks, quality of life is there. Um, the, again, the feel of the place, the safety, all of those reflect literally the number of times you used those words in your answers to the question. Uh, by the way, this is the seven-page summary will be available at the back of the room on your way out of the room. So you don't have to be able to read the, the small print up there. You can, and it'll be online, obviously, also after the meeting. But you can take a copy of this with you and sort of peruse it in more detail at your leisure if you'd like. Still in the first meeting, um, the second question was about community development. Um, and the question was, uh, you know, what one thing is it most important for the city to achieve in the area of community development over the next five years? Uh, the top items are down at the bottom of the slide again. Clearly, given what citizens felt were the most valuable things about living in Norman Beach, uh, these three top things follow that pretty closely. Protect the character of the city by finding the right balance of preservation and growth, and the right type of growth. 
focus on infrastructure and redevelopment, and plan wisely. Now, again, you know, the, the first meeting's summary was probably the longest. So this is really pulling together a lot of different input, but consistent input. And you can see there in the, in the word cloud, um, the, re, uh, the community, the word communities comes out um, as the, the largest and the most uh, bolded. Residents, again, the feel of the community. Control development is down there. Also build and growth. Uh, traffic was a major issue. There were others that you would see around the periphery of the cloud. But that gives you a good sense of both uh, what participants thought it was important to, uh, to achieve and going back to the previous slide, what, what they value about living in Ormond Beach. So the next uh, meeting, meeting two, focused on transportation and livability. And the question posed to participants there was, what transportation-related measure would most contribute to the livability of Ormond Beach over the next five years? Uh, there were some, some general themes in both the information and the discussion. Transportation actually works relatively well with a few exception, exceptions in, in Ormond Beach. The issues that do exist, um, many of them relate to east-west traffic, east-west travel, because you have only one east-west road, you have multiple north-south roads. Um, in line with that, the answers participants gave to what transportation measure would most contribute to livability in Ormond Beach, the first one was the Hand Avenue extension. And more generally, for those of you who weren't at the meeting, that's a second potential east-west corridor that is a high priority for the city in transportation. Um, other answers that came to the top, enhanced public transportation, addis additional bicycle routes and lanes, and enhanced walkability. Those were all sort of clustered up there, and you see them in the cloud. Granada comes up as a big issue. Um, traffic comes up as a big issue. But you also see some of the other themes up there in the cloud. Um, you know, bus, bikes, um, Hand Avenue is there, Votran is there. Okay. The third meeting, environment and water quality, was the focus of this meeting. In terms of general themes, there were a couple. Uh, water quality came up as clearly the, the largest overarching theme, and there were a couple of aspects of that. One was protecting uh, groundwater and water supply from contamination. Another was protecting water bodies from stormwater runoff, and those were related but not exactly the same. Um, so, and in water supply, we're talking about the aquifer in terms of contamination, you know, the source of most of your drinking water. Um, we, the question we asked there, what is it most important for the city to achieve in the next five years in environment and water quality? Um, the top answer, we asked this in a couple of different ways. We asked it in the table discussions, and then at the end of the meeting, we had a series of options, and we asked people to choose with the polling devices. In both cases, replacing septic systems with sewer, um, sewer connections came up as the most important thing by a significant margin. Now, it's also potentially the most difficult thing, but um, in terms of what participants identified, that was it. Um, the other two that rose up there were a number of items that are continuing to build stormwater treatment capacity and appropriately regulating development to protect natural resources, including wetlands and water bodies and uh, the aquifer. Public safety was the focus of the next meeting, and um, the, the general question there was simply how could the city improve delivery of public safety services, including fire, excuse me, police, fire, and emergency preparedness. Um, the first thing to note here is that there is a, there was among participants a really high level of satisfaction with these services uh, that, that the city provides with police, fire, and emergency preparedness. So the baseline level there was, was quite high. On a nine-point nine scale, um, 
90 percent essentially gave the gave the city 90 or above. <laughs> so um, particularly on fire and, and police. Uh, <clears throat> having said that, if you look carefully at this um, at this word cloud, you will see three or four things that we thought about combining, but didn't in the interest of just respecting the words that were used, but you'll notice up there, evac, transport, ambulance, EMS. The highest ranked answer to the question of what, uh, how you, you would enhance these services was um, a greater city role in emergency transport. Again, a difficult thing for a number of reasons, but that was the, the highest, uh, the most frequent answer. Um, followed by a somewhat greater emphasis on emergency preparedness. Um, there was a sense that perhaps, uh, although it was rated very highly in terms of satisfaction, uh, there was more to do there than in uh, police or fire protection directly. So those are the two items that came to the top there. Leisure and culture. Um, in terms of themes, I think if there was a, a couple of overarching themes, it was the, the idea that um, a lot of both residents of Ormond Beach and of the surrounding areas use uh, the city's recreational offerings and the cultural amenities that are literally within the borders of, of Ormond Beach. Uh, the presentations that evening were from the uh, city's uh, leisure services department, from the uh, Memorial Museum and Gardens, and from, um, thank you, the Historical Society. Uh, so uh, there's a very high degree of use, and folks wanted more. <laughs> that was the, uh, the most frequently used word. And you can see a whole range of things around that. Art, bikes, bicycle paths, the McDonald House, the uh, center. Uh, the, so in terms of uh, frequency of requests, at least for city uh, enhancements to those, um, to those offerings, the... Um, what you see up there, new facilities and parks, particularly west of 95, uh, bike paths and trails, and boating and water activities. And there were a whole range of suggestions for the Historical Society and, and the, the museum as well. The last of the six meetings was focused on economic development. And um, the presentations highlighted the range of activities that the city and its partners um, there were presentations from the Chamber of Commerce and from Workforce Flag Revolution, the range of things they provide um, to develop existing and new businesses, the range of activities. Um, the highest, uh, the most frequent requests for enhancements or additions to those activities, which is what we asked, what, what would you add or enhance, um, were first activities to attract new business, and there was a, uh, a range of, uh, of suggestions there that would address branding, enhancing, and disseminating information about economic assets, and focusing on redevelopment and vacant properties. Uh, most of the vacant land for business development, uh, we understand, is uh, either out at Ormond Crossings or the airport. There is other land, but that was the focus. Um, a second cluster of suggestions uh, revolved around retaining existing businesses through events, advertising, and networking that would allow them to enhance their, um, their client base. And um, there was a third sort of lower down uh, set of items that had to do with streamlining processes that businesses need to go through to expand, existing businesses need to go through to expand. So you can see um, those themes reflected, those requests reflected in the word cloud. Uh, existing business, develop that, maintain Ormond uh, incentives. So there are, again, uh, infrastructure is there as well. Um, educated workforce is there, range of thoughts. Um, that meeting probably had the greatest range of suggestions, if you like. Um, so. Uh, that may not have been as quick as I was intending, but uh, I, it's a very brief overview of this. <laughs> so um, again, 
You can uh, take uh, with you a copy of that overview on your way out, and I'll give it back to Joyce to talk about this. Thank you, Raphael. Um, thank you. As Raphael said, one of the final steps in the process is sharing this information with the City Commission. They will have a workshop on the 27th of February. Um, that's a time for them to talk about this information. It'll be facilitated by Marilyn Crotty. She's the former director of the Institute um, of Government at the University of Central Florida. The public is invited to attend, but it's the time for the commission to talk about that kind of stuff. So this is our little, what we call a flower diagram. You've seen this repeatedly in the presentations um, over um, the six, uh, six month process. So this is how we engage the community. We started out, I don't know where to stand. Is this good? This good? Over this, he's giving me the sign over here, over here, over here. So um, the commission meeting is one where you can come to the commission and speak on any item not on the agenda. And you also have, you have three minutes to do that. And you also have time on any item on the agenda. So we have advisory boards. Those boards meet every month. And you can go to those. And if you're specifically interested in um, the airport, you can go to the airport advisory board. If you're in, interested in finance, you can go to the finance, financial advisory board or historic preservation or quality of life. So there's 16 different boards and committees you can go and find out information. Our website, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Social media, we push things out to Twitter and Facebook. Outside agencies and community events, we do a lot of that. But first, I would like to bring up Kelly McGuire. She is our finance director. And we're launching a new financial transparency website. Uh, we had information on our website that wasn't in real time. What she's going to talk to you about today is a project that we're going to be launching on February 15th or whatever day that is, um, that you will be able to see real time data for the current year and three prior years. And as we complete each fiscal year moving forward, all that information will be there. I don't want to steal her thunder, thunder so I'll let her go. I'm not sure there's much thunder here, but we are talking about numbers, so. OK. Well, there we go. If you've gone onto the city's website at all and looked at our transparency reports, you know that you go onto the home page, and then there's a link at the bottom here that says transparency. And I'm going to show you what we have currently, and then I'm going to show you what we're going to have in the next couple of weeks available. And they'll both be accessed from that same site. So right now, when you go to the site, you get a list here, essentially, of various reports. These reports up on the screen, and it's OK if you don't see them and you can't read all the numbers. That's not going to be important tonight. But the information we have here is essentially a variety of PDF reports on payroll and on accounts payable. So there's really no ability for you to interact with the data or to select specific things that you want to look at and not look at everything. What we'll have on the same web page in the next couple of weeks is a link that you'll be able to launch our new website. And it'll look like this. So hope you agree this looks a whole lot better. Again, you probably can't read these numbers. Quite frankly, I'm standing closer than the rest of you, and I can't read them. But let me just tell you a little bit about it. This is the initial page that you'll see if you go to the site. Across the top, you see colored boxes. That's just information that is revenues, expenditures, and other summary type information. And then you'll see things graf graphically on all of these pages. The key really is all the way over to the right. And thank you, Ned, for circling that for me. And you'll see a couple of lines there. They're blue. And I'm going to zoom in on those in just a second. Those are the links. And every time you hit a link, you're going to go to another page, and you're going to be able to dig deeper and deeper and deeper and get more and more detail. So if we zoom in on there, you'll see these are links. We have a link for expenditures, one for revenue, one for payroll, and then one for vendor payments. So I'm going to show you one web page for each of these links so you can get a feel for what kind of information is out there and how you might utilize it. This is our expenditures. And so if you may be interested, for example, in information for a particular fiscal year, that's over to the left side of the screen, right? We have 2016 through 2019 there. This information and all of the information through this site is updated on a weekly basis. 
So where it used to be, we would have to wait till the end of the month and then a couple more weeks beyond that to close the month out and create those PDF type files. Now you can go and you can see what we're working on this week, essentially. So we have various fiscal years. You can narrow things down by fiscal year if that's what you're interested in. And then a little bit further over in those blue boxes, you may not be interested in seeing expenditures for the city as a whole. You may be see interested in seeing expenditures for a particular department. So maybe you just want to look at police or fire or finance. You can do that by clicking those boxes, and the information below it then will change and be just for that particular area you want to look at. The same thing is true when you go to the revenue page. Again, you have over to the left side of the screen the various years that are available currently, and we'll just keep adding to those years. We're not going to ever take away what's there. We'll just keep adding. But maybe for revenues, you want to look at a particular source of revenue. Maybe you want to just see property taxes, or you want to know what we collect for utility bills as a whole, or you want to see uh, business tax or fines. You can click on that particular box, and then the information displayed will be just for that particular source. And you do have the option to combine these things. So if you want to look at fines and you also want to look at property taxes at the same time, you can do that. Payroll information, we have that currently available in those PDF files. They're listed, essentially you see the position and then you see the amount that was spent for that month on that position. Here you have a little bit more options available. And I know, again, you probably can't see all of this, but in the box here on the left side bottom, that's a list of positions. So every position that the city has will be listed there. And then you'll get the information on the position, what department it's in, and then you can, using these drop-down boxes, if you'd like, you can either see all wage information for that, those positions, or you can decide that you just want to see the base salary or you just want to see the overtime salary. So you can use those boxes that are off to the right, click and unclick, and get just the information you want. And so you can continue to drill down and get more and more details here. And then lastly, I'll show you, these are all our vendor information information payments. So all of those boxes at the top that are the dark blue, that begins the list of our vendors. And we have thousands of vendors. They're all alphabetical there. There is a way that you can go to particular vendors and, or just narrow down and sort. Um, but in this case, I happen to have the vendor selected. And you can see it's the box that's the lighter box in between all those dark blue boxes. That information for that particular vendor is displayed below it in the list. And what, if you could actually see all of this information a little closer, you would see that for that particular vendor, we have every single payment that the city has made to that vendor from today back through 2016. Okay, And it'll show you the payment that was made, when it was made, what the check number was. It'll tell you the dollar amount, and it'll tell you why we made the payment. So any information you want to find out about money that goes out of the city, this is a great way to do that. Now that was a very quick look at our new transparency website. Um, certainly, we don't expect you, this was not meant to be a tutorial. It was just meant to let you know it's out there. Hope you get in and start using it when we have it available. Maybe by the end of the month. Certainly, it will be by February 15th, no later than that. And if you are in there and you're trying to find something, or you get yourself lost, please call me, call our assistant finance director, we're happy while you're sitting there at the computer to talk you through and, and show you where you need to go to get what you want to do, OK? So we hope you get in there. We hope you use that. And then we have another tool available for you. Thank you, Kelly. We're very proud of Kelly's work on that. Uh, we have transitioned to a new um, software system for the city. It's a pretty big undertaking. Our software system was 20 years old. Kind of the green screen. Do you all remember the green screen of death? I mean, for those, I remember that. So we sort of were like a green screen. And now we're actually fully a web-based, off-site hosted um, system, which is great during a hurricane. If something happens, we don't have to worry about moving our, our hard drives because they're hosted off-site. But Kelly and her staff do an amazing job. It really is as transparent as you can get. Um, her number will be in the back on the summary sheet, so if you have any uh, questions about where, where to find the data, uh, she can help walk you through that. So thank you very much, Kelly. We appreciate it. 
Um, Gabe Menendez is going to talk to you about another piece of um, software that we started using for the OB Life. Let's just move over here. Um, for the OB Life series, and uh, that's where all of this information is posted. It's called OpenGov. But there's lots of things that you can do to interact with the public on that. And um, Gabe, our public works director, will talk to you a little bit about that. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Joyce. So OpenGov is, is just that, a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a website platform that allows us to enhance citizen engagement. Some of the, some of the things that we can get, gain out of OpenGov is basically we can increase the communication with you. It's very important. We can get feedback from you all. That's very important as well, and especially going forward and keeping current to with with uh, projects and and progress and issues and those type of things that that we have uh, going on. Um, we try to keep. We're going to be putting out what we call stories, which are basically articles. They'll be out, and I'll walk you through those. How you get to it, and then this presentation is actually a little bit of a tutorial. And the reason I set it up this way is so that you have the opportunity once you leave here um, and we post this on, on, online, you have the opportunity to go in there and basically follow these steps to get the information and provide the survey and the feedback that we would, we would like to re receive from you all. And this is something that we will be doing going forward um, uh, on various different projects. The project or the topic that I used, let's start here. The, the website, you see where the arrow is where it says OB Life? That's where the icon's going to be for this OpenGov. It may look a little bit like the OB Life icon. It may look different, but that's the location of where it will be on the website. So you will be able to click on that, and that will take you to a page that looks like this, and where the red arrow is, we're going to choose that story. This is a, a draft form. Something that is current of interest to folks is the discussion and what the city is looking at in terms of projects associated with the half cent sales tax. So we're gonna, we've, we've set up this tutorial on that and that the final version of that will be out by the 15th of, of, of February. It'll be up on the site by the 15th of February. So as you click on that, you'll come into this page, which will pretty much be the lead in into the article um, and the information. Um, I'm not gonna read the whole thing there, but just to give you a, a sense of the feel for the, for the project. As you work down and scroll down the page, there's more information about the article and so on. Um, and here, as you scroll down, we've divided the numerous projects associated with the sales tax, the half cent sales tax. We've divided it into three categories. Okay, we've got the first category, which is transportation, and below each category, as you scroll down, you'll have the list of the projects that we're considering for, for, for the half cent sales tax. In this particular case, you have the category, which is transportation, and the very first project below that is the Hand Avenue Extension, which happened to be one of the high polling um, projects in, in that. But these are in no particular order. It's just the listing of the projects. They're not ranked or, or, or anything. It's just the listing of the projects. The other category was water quality on that. And in this particular case, the, fir the first project listed on the water quality is the phase two downtown improvement um, uh, for, for, uh, for that project on water quality. We have two others listed on that. And the third category is the septic tank conversion for that. And the first project listed under that category is septic tank conversion. And the first project is the hidden the Hidden Hills tank conversion. Again, that's just a random listing of the, of the projects that were there. They're not in any ranked order. As you move on and, go and scroll further down, you come to a page here where this is where we can start getting into a survey question, and we can start getting some feedback from you all. And that's important for us to have as we move forward with this. So we will have an introduction to, to the question, how would you set your priorities in this particular case? How would you set these priorities? And we have different formats in which we can ask these questions. The program, the Open, the open Go platform, pretty much is, it gives us 10 different options. We can have text exchange. You can basically respond with a text. We can have multiple choice questions. We can have numeric questions or responses where you can give it a ranking, do a poll, give it a rank, um, and so on. So there's a lot of opportunities for that. 
But you would come down here to access the survey, and you'll come to a screen like this, which basically shows you the question on there. It has a small introduction to it. And then you have to come here, and it says, uh, take the survey at this, at this point. You click that button, and you'll move into the survey. Now, the first time you do this, and I'm going to step you through this, you have to register. And I'll go through that. But once you're registered, as, as in this case, I'm already registered, so my name and contact information is, or my uh, password is already preloaded in that so that I can go ahead and, and, and access it. And I would basically sign in and take the survey. But for the very first, when you register now, that's the first time. You only have to do that once. Once you do that, then you, you're registered. This is what the information that we're going to ask you with regards to the registration for the, for the program, platform. It's basically your name, address, and email. And it's very important that we ask you the address because this program allows us to basically take these survey responses and have those from within the city and those from outside the city. Okay? Obviously, we're very interested in what you, the city residents, have to say uh, um, with regards to, to these questions. So that's why it's very important that you do that. Again, once you register, you only have to register once. And once you do that and get into the program or the, the survey questions, again, you'll see the question here. At this point, you, have, you, you get to answer the question of whether or not you want your name to show up with the, res, with the survey responses. So you can put your name, you can keep it, post it, make it public for everybody, or you can keep it private. You can make that choice here so that that, that's, that stays um, with that. And in this particular survey, for these projects, what we opted to do is the dot method. So what we've done is we're going to allocate you 10 points, or 10 dots. Um, for that, and then we're going to ask you to take those 10 dots and basically allocate them to any of the eligible projects that are on the list. This is not a comprehensive list of the projects that I talked about earlier. This is just a summary so that you can get a feel for the, for the project. And as you go down the list, you can see the different projects. And the way you basically assign those dots is you have a little box that has a plus and a minus. So you can see the 10 dots on top, and as you click them, you start taking dots away from the top so that you can only go to 10. If you get to the 10th one and you figure you want to change it, just go back up, do a minus sign, go back to the 10 dots, and you can do that. If you have a one project and one project is of interest to you, you can take all 10 dots and assign them to that one project. Or you can take 10 projects and assign one dot to them. So it's totally up to you how you want to spend your dots. <laughs> <laughs> so um, at the end of the survey, once you submit it, you'll have a summary of the survey, which basically shows the allocation. And you can see that this represents what the final screen looked like in terms of that. And, <coughs> pardon me. and then at the, end, at the end, once you're done with the survey and we get the feedback, we'll be able to give you back the feedback. And this is that survey that we currently have with these are results that we put in, in terms of assigning dots just as a test method. But you'll be able to see a graph like this with the projects listed on the left-hand side and then the bar indicating the, the number of votes that it received on, on those projects. Um, that's it. So again, it'll be the 15th. Thank you. OK. And, uh, that's great. That's, and again, Gabe, not every survey will involve dots. It, as you said earlier, some will involve text responses. What are some of the other options again? Oh. One, two. OK, thank you. We have multiple choice options where we can list choices that you can pick from. We have numeric options where we can basically tell you, OK, you get five points. How would you rank this, one through five? Um, and, and, and those various options. Are we going to take questions right now? Um, we have not been taking questions. We would encourage you to ask specific how-to questions to your, uh, to your staff, either after the meeting or by phone. Um, I, I can I'll catch you on the side here. 
Yeah, yeah. he'll come to you. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next steps from here. Um, some of this touches on uh, material that Joyce just went over with you, but um, the I'm going to lie here. Each and every commission member has said they will curl up and commit every page of this to heart. <laughs> That's that. <laughs> they already have. They have, however, committed to uh, reading and understanding this. So uh, this will go to the commission. Uh, the commission's first strategic planning workshop is scheduled for February 27th. Maryland will work with the commission to translate, to help them translate that material into goals. There are a number of different steps, but the key here is that they will go through a process of understanding what's in here, deliberating about it, articulating goals, and then through the, in the course of one or more meetings, uh, they'll, they'll give that to staff. Staff will come back with a slightly polished version of that. Commission will continue to work with it until they have a set of goals that um, they are comfortable adopting on behalf of the city and that they are comfortable reflects both their deliberations and this input. Um, and that plan will then, uh, that will then be used to update the strategic plan and develop the, the, the budget. In the meantime, Keep an eye on the website for both OpenGov and financial transparency. Financial transparency, it's a wonderful tool. You probably won't spend a lot of time just browsing. You're likely to go to that for something specific. For OpenGov, it's, um, it'll reward some browsing. It'll reward some browsing. Uh, maybe for many of you, financial transparency tool will as well. Um, but in any case, look at those, understand those. If you don't understand them and want to use, use them, contact staff. They are not only willing but eager to help those tools be used. Your use of those tools will help them. So um, become familiar with them. OK. So um, we want to do a couple of things uh, before we give it back to Joyce to, to wrap up. You saw the word clouds earlier. We want to pose to you two questions um, and generate uh, two additional word clouds in real time. Uh, to help you do that, there will be a staff member at each table. Uh, there probably is one at most of the tables. Uh, and I see people moving to tables that don't already have staff members. Will the staff member at each table please uh, raise your hand? Uh, no, we, we, we should have enough staff for every table. So they're joining you now. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to, okay, is there any table that does not yet have a staff member and know who that staff member is? Okay, we need one more staff member here. Or Gabe, can you, can you work with Gabe? Okay. Anybody else? Uh, here in the middle, you're about to receive your staff member. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. So in a moment, we'll pose the question. It's actually up there, but it's in very small print. Um, we're going to ask you to first write your answer to that question on a card. There are just simple index cards at your table. Uh, when you write the answer to the first question, we also want you to put a number one on there in case this, this should save. But in case it doesn't, we want to be able to recreate the, the word cloud. So take one card right now and write a number one on it, and take another card and write a number two on it. Okay. Okay. So your uh, your staff member has pre-connected their phone. Is there any staff member that doesn't have the connection yet? Okay. Your staff member has pre-connected their phone to this software. 
And when we pose the question, we're going to ask you to write your answer on the card. And it really needs to be one word. It can be hyphenated. Um, staff members, as a reminder, if something is hyphenated, it can be underscored and it'll be treated appropriately by the software. Just underscore where the hyphen would be. Um, but it, it, it's just a one word or one term answer. Is that clear? Yep. OK. And so when you, <laughs> OK, we, participants don't need to worry about that, do they? Who, who, who jumped the gun here? OK. <laughs> so anyway, you will write your answer on a postcard and hand it to your staff member. They will enter it into the software. And uh, you'll see the word cloud evolve in real time here. Um, does anybody need additional clarification, sir? OK, you're going to generate one of those word clouds. OK, so the, the question is, think of Ormond Beach five years from now. That's the question. Oh, OK, thank you. It is also at the bottom of your agenda, the first, the first bullet point under real-time word clouds is the first question. Think of Ormond Beach five years from now. What one word would you choose to describe the community you'd like to see? Write it on card number one and give it to your staff, and you'll see them appearing in real time up here. Can be one word or a hyphenated pair of words, but only one. Um, actually, the fact that more than one person put that in. So what you're seeing here, again, the more people put in a word, the bolder it gets, the bigger it gets. It's a software called Poll Anywhere. I'll, I'll explain it afterwards. Somebody snuck a, a name in there. <laughs> OK. How many staff people are still entering words? Kelly? OK, let's take a couple more minutes. And I just want to make sure I'm correct. Um, some staff member, this will save, will it not? It will. OK. All right. Let me know when you're done. Done? OK, so this is the result. Family, well, that's the result. Um, family friendly, vibrant, residential, quaint, uh, contentment, younger, orderly, um, active, informative, thriving, worldly. So both quaint and worldly. Um, the same as it is now, green, um, uncongested, transportation, accessible, um, alive, Kelly. <laughs> OK. Um, we're going to assume you didn't put that in yourself. Um, so in any case, that gives you a sense of what this group tonight hopes the city will be like as a result of this process in five years. Um, so, OK. So um, we good? OK, one more question then. I'm sorry. We want to take a picture? I just want to make sure somebody got a picture of that. OK. This is your. Uh, 
we want to make sure it saves before we move on. We got it. Thank okay. You. All right. So a family-friendly, vibrant, residential, quaint and worldly place um, that fosters contentment, among all those other things. Okay. So now, write your answer to the second question, which is um, a little more mundane. Um, in one word, what did you find most valuable about this process? Um, it would be helpful for us to know. So... Um, for those of you, actually for everyone, whether you were at one meeting or many or none and are here tonight for the first time, one word that you found most valuable uh, that describes what you found most valuable about this process. Okay. Okay, do, uh, are there any staff members still entering words? Nope. Okay, so this is what you have. Informative, oh, well, there we go. Informative, educational, safe, open, I think we're done. Uh, <laughs> honesty, involvement, uh, openness, participation, the public safety presentation, a couple of specific mentions of presentations there. Um, illuminating, beneficial, um, inclusive, uh, intuitive. That's, um, you know, we're obviously happy to see lots of good words up there about the process, but the other reason for this is it provides a certain kind of direction for the city's uh, subsequent public involvement efforts. This is what you found most valuable. Um, you know, the city is probably not going to do series of six meetings every year, but as you saw with OpenGov and financial transparency, they are committed to continuing public involvement. This gives a sense of what you found most helpful about this process and gives them food for thought about how to design the processes that come next, be they big and elaborate like this or maybe more focused. Um, you see what, what you are found more, most valuable here, ideally what would also characterize processes going forward. Okay, so I think uh, we're about, this is, uh, as we said, a very different meeting than, than some of the previous ones. It's really um, a wrap-up of the work to date and a look forward to how to stay engaged. A reminder, the, there is also a meeting evaluation on the back of your agenda. We weren't going to let you go without one final evaluation. And a second reminder, the summaries will be available on your way out. There will be a human there handing you a physical copy of the summary. Joyce, uh, would you like to? Yes, thank you all. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Mayor Bill Partington and the City Commission for their vision about holding these workshops. They wanted uh, community outreach where we went to the people, talked to them about issues that they were concerned about, and I think we did an amazing job at that. Thank you all very much. You've made this successful. I 
I am very proud of our city staff team. They did 90% of the presentations. Uh, we did them in-house, and um, they did an amazing job. It was, they were sort of a competition for one upmanship between the directors, and each director almost outdid the, the next. So I'm very proud of you city staff members. Let's give them a hand. And lots of people made this happen. Certainly, uh, Rafael Montavo and Hal Bierdahl, please stand up so we can give you a sense of applause. It was so important to have a facilitator that could manage a large group of people and ensure everybody had an opportunity to be heard. And that was really what was the um, center point for this whole workshop, is that you felt like you could be heard. We couldn't give everyone the microphone, but those fishbowl questions, let me tell you, we answered over 700 questions from you on all kinds of things that had nothing to do with some of the topics that we were talking about. And they're all here online. But it was a good exercise for staff to go through that so that we could articulate and answer those questions. So we're really grateful for that. IT uh, uh, folks were indispensable. Um, Ned and Brian, thank you. I couldn't remember his name for a second. Um, uh, leisure services staff, Catherine, um, Stefan, Robert, uh, Sonia, in, indispensable uh, in making that happen. And certainly um, Mark Swartz, who made everybody heard, including me. Um, this was a great exercise for us. It, as the mayor said, it is unprecedented in our history to have done something like this. Um, five years ago, we had two workshops that had about 100 people total in both workshops. Seven workshops, this is the seventh, over 700 people engaged, and many of you came for just one workshop. So we touched a lot of different people. We thank you for your time and attention. We know your time is valuable. The fact that you took the time to come out to these workshops says that you really care about your community, and we're grateful for that. Thank you all, and we give you a hand of applause. There's uh, plenty of food, so help yourself, and thank you again. There'll be uh, handouts by the door for the summary information. Thank you all.